Good morning. I'm Father Anthony Mahalik. I am a Redemptorist priest speaking to you from the Basilica of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, the Mission Church in Boston, Massachusetts. I welcome you to this Gospel Reflection for the fourth Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back, able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. 
So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind, and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this, and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see. So your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Jesus says in the Gospel, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He is the true light, the one and the only light of the world. The Gospel of John has a strong theme of darkness and light that runs through its entirety. We see a world that is cast in darkness that has been visited by the incarnate Son of God, the light that is before time began and the light that will remain for all eternity. When Jesus says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world, we are hearing the very core of the ministry of Christ. And that is to shatter the darkness of sin and death and to bring a radiant dawn to a dismal world 
lost in the dreariness and fog and blindness of its own self-delusion. The light of the world cannot abide the darkness. For the darkness is the equivalent of the absence of God. And the light of the world has come to make the face of God radiantly present. And so he sees the blind man who is, in the Gospel of John, a symbol of the darkness that has engulfed all of humanity. Jesus sees him trapped in the darkness and cannot ignore him. Notice, it is not the blind man who approaches Jesus. It is rather Jesus who approaches him. And after covering his eyes with clay, he tells him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. He does so, and his sight is restored. What we are to understand is that the waters of the pool of Siloam are another symbol for us. They symbolize the transformative waters of baptism. The sacrament of baptism has brought each one of the baptized out of the blindness of the dark and has brought them into the radiant life, the radiant light that is life in Christ Jesus. After washing in the pool of Siloam, the life of the blind man has changed forever. He not only gained his physical sight, he gained the eyes of faith. Jesus asks him, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he asks, who is he, Lord? Who is he that I, I may believe in him? Jesus replies, it is I who am speaking to you. And he says to him, yes, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. The blind man now lives in the radiant light of absolute truth, and he has gained a singular wisdom, for he confounds the Pharisees who question him. And he has gained a singular courage of being, for he's willing to stand up to their rejection of him, whereas his own parents shrink away in fear at the thought of saying anything that might align them with this Christ, Jesus, the one who has brought sight to their son. It is important for us not to miss the very end of this powerful gospel. Jesus says, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. The Pharisees stand smugly in his presence, and they say to him, surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus says to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you are saying we see so your sin remains. All of us must stand humbly before our God and admit to our own blindness. It is only then in our self-emptying that God is able to fill us with the light of Christ. If I say, I am not blind, I am saying to Jesus, I need you not. 
I am strong and sufficient and perfectly capable to navigate this journey of life on my own, for I see perfectly the road ahead of me. If we say this, then in truth, we have only gone more deeply into the darkness of self-delusion, self-deception, and we will certainly find ourselves lost along the way. Jesus says, I am the light of the world, and I came that those who are blind might see Might we stand before him then, humbly admitting the truth of our blindness, that we might then come to see in the fullness of truth the radiant light and love of God that has come to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illumine our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you for joining us today for this time of reflection, Redemptorists Online. We hope you will join us again next Wednesday, March 22nd, when Father Philip Dabney will be offering us our Lenten Reflections.